Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models, my name is Bob Wardman and welcome to this nice little tutorial. It's going to be a bit of a different tutorial, it's going to be on commission builds for scale modelling. So what we're going to cover here, um, it's been a requested video because I did start off Genesis Models doing commission builds and people have been asking, you got any tips or tricks to sort of enter into this world of basically being paid to build models and sell them on. Um, now, I just want to quickly sort of just throw this out there, the money side of things, because I don't want you to be watching the whole of this video and then it not be for you, because the money is not the best. Um, in all honesty, I think I did sort of, you know, reach the peak in doing commission builds and although you can sort of charge a lot of money for um, to, to build models for people you can't re you're not going to get rich off it basically um, you are going to be struggling to make a minimum wage um, you know you're going to have to really sort of like bring your costs down um, but there's only so much you can charge people um, the, the, the shame is is you generally find a lot of people don't really want to pay a lot of money for someone to build their models, right? It's a really sort of niche, small market. Um, you really sort of um, are going to find it hard to find these customers that keep coming back to you uh, and who are willing to pay this premium price for a premium model. Um, and even then, you know, it's going to be hard to earn a minimum wage. So, um, you know, that's probably put a lot of you off and maybe you don't want to continue watching this video. But at the same time, you do get to work for yourself and you do get to build models as a job, which um, although, yes, the money isn't the best, you know, you've got kind of like a really cool job. Um, so if you want to sort of know a couple of tips and tricks and sort of like my experience in doing some scale, um, doing commission work, continue watching. Um, so first off, what I found was is as a tip is to get some sort of a gallery, some sort of a catalog going um, I found that when I started off a lot of people they would build a model that throw it on eBay uh, maybe they put it up as an auction or a buy it now and what would happen is is it would get sold and then that was it right those pictures that model was gone I found that it was best to continue using these pictures, continue using that build, right? Because once you've built a model, say you've built a Spitfire, you've got all these lovely, lovely pictures, you put it on eBay and it sells. You know, don't just leave it at that. Do you know what I did is I actually took those pictures and I threw it back up on eBay, but I listed it as a, um, these pictures are example pictures and I would build something um, of to that same standard and you would receive something very similar right and what this did in essence was that every single build you did went up on eBay it went back up out there and over time you end up building up this nice catalog of, of um, scale models um, so in the end I think I had something like maybe 40 odd models on eBay I mean I didn't actually have them own them or have them built but they were nice example pictures and it would be saying hey I will you know build you something to this same same standard um, and it kind of Ad, it kind of acts as almost like advertising at the same time because um, the cool thing is is by you know doing that um, you might get a lot of people who will look at this nice big gallery you've built up this nice big catalog um, but they might and then probably you know you probably sell the model maybe two or three times I know it kind of means sort of building the same model again and again for a few times but you sort of really kind of you know taking one build and you're making more money out of one build as well as as i say you get this catalog going this big sort of amount of pictures out there and people will come to you and go i like what you've got but can you build me something different um which is rather rather cool so selling on ebay is probably i found the best place to get started right with your build um but 
The problem is with that is what you've also got to remember is when selling iron on eBay is you've got all the fees that come with it. You know, um, I can't remember now because it was like 10 years ago, but I think it was something like about a 10% eBay fee and then I think it was maybe like a two three percent PayPal fee right so you add up all these different fees um, and it comes to quite a bit um, just to sort of let you know um, the average kind of costs I mean um, when you're sort of doing this you've really got to know um, what to charge you know what each kit um, takes in time to build but it was something like uh, maybe a 148 scale was the popular scale and I would could do something like a, a Spitfire um, World War two fighters could be around about 200 pounds um, Maybe something like a modern jet would be maybe maybe 400 pounds um, And I could probably build sorry about the alarm going off, but I could probably build um, a say a, a World War two Spitfire in a week a modern jet within two weeks all right so as you can already see you know money wise you know 200 pounds for a week probably not the best you know 400 pounds for two weeks again not the best we're sort of talking minimum wage but then we've got the cost you know the PayPal fees you know you're taking off 10% there pay um, sorry, eBay fees maybe 10% 3% PayPal um, I always kind of said maybe like about 15% um would is sort of like a you know a, a nice sort of margin I, I used back then which if you can just imagine like 200 pounds take away 15 percent that is here comes my maths now about 30 pounds so to speak um and that's coming off your expenses that also included the kit itself so you could be spending 20 pounds on a kit so you've got 50 pounds coming off uh you know already you've got like 150 pounds left um, again, you're struggling to make that um, minimum wage. So the next thing really what you want to do, again, we need to bring down your costs, right? Your costs, as I say, PayPal, eBay, you know, it's good advertisement, brings in the customers, but you want to sort of bring that down. So this is where um, another sort of tip is to build a customer base and have good customer service, right? Um, I did find that, you know, because it's a niche market, there's a small market to people who are willing to be paying these hundreds and hundreds of pounds for a build, right? So what you tend to find is I found that most of my customers who brought um, a model off eBay would then be emailing me going uh, well first off they would get the model and what you wanted to do is make sure your models were of a high standard right because at well high standard and they arrived all in one piece because what would generally happen is they would come back and when they come back um, they would probably be saying something like and this is what you want is that you want them to come back and go I want you to build this build right it's nothing that you've got listed on eBay or anywhere else it is something Pacific custom they want made and the cool thing is about this is when you start having these backwards and forward emails or even phone calls um, where them actually asking for something custom it means you cut out the middleman i.e eBay which means already you're saving that 10% right which for say a modern jet which I was selling for maybe 400-450 um, you know saving 10% is 40 pounds that you are saving right and as I say when it comes to your money kind of earning in a minimum wage um, it really is a cost a big cost um, to actually doing this um, the other thing is as well is to go off and get yourself a wholesale account right i managed to get one at hanance.co.uk uh, and by getting that um, wholesale account i brought down the cost again even more so all the kits and you know let's face it you know you want to be buying your tools and your paints and stuff to get about 30 percent off all of that again brings down the costs and brings up your wages um, so that is another area that you want to sort of go in um, as well as you know these customers could really be um, booking in loads and loads of, of models which then also brings us to um, 
sort of again building up your customer base but also building up your work right in the end i did reach a peak of something like i was i had work booked up for like six whole months um, i was taking in so many orders that i was totally utterly sorted sorted constantly building for, for up to six months um, and that's kind of the position you want to be in um, because what you don't want is to be um, you've done one customer's order and then next week you haven't got an order so what you're going to build right it's nice to just keep on building the money rolling in and everything which is why it is really sort of crucial because it's such a niche market and there's a small customer base uh, you really need to be on the ball with your customer service and building really good models You know, you don't want to be sending poor models for them not to come back You want them to come back because you can build it all up uh, Which then sort of brought to me. I mean what the way I went about it. I mean you could go about it in different ways, but um, What you might also want to do is build some sort of a website or a forum me personally I went off and I paid for a forum which um, was something like about twenty dollars a month and i used the forum as a means of customer service right in the sense that what i would do is <clears throat> um i would set up a post on a forum you know a build diary where i would you know do my build for the day i'd take some pictures showing what i've done for that day i'd post it on a forum i'd let the customer know that his build um, Fred is here on the forum so basically the customer can come along and watch you build um, whatever kit they, they've asked for which I found really sort of helped the customer and the customer really liked that extra service of being able to watch the build come together as well as you can then use the forum as a um, final reveal um, you know I am saying forum here but a website could do you could do much uh, just the same and probably look a bit more professional um, but the customer kept totally and utterly informed but at the same time again advertising you know you are putting that work out there on the internet not just for the customer to come and see and have good customer service but for everyone else to come along and see and potentially have more customers come from that and the other thing that i used for the forum as well was i had like a sort of a a diary a, um, a a list of what builds i was doing um, what week i was going to be doing them on so as again all your customers would know that their build would be started this month for that week um, and they would nicely be ready waiting for their build thread to be started and start seeing and watching the builds being done so next up is postage and packaging. Now postage and packaging is sort of like, uh, I, I found was the big pain in the butt was postage and packaging because it's, it's one of these things. We know scale models are delicate and to go off and take all this money for a scale model, build it, put it in the post and it can be totally utterly destroyed by the time it gets to the customer. And as we've already established, you know, you're not really gonna you're gonna be struggling to get above a minimum wage and to have one of those builds totally destroyed and the customer wants a refund is a bit of a pain so um, I, I've posted out loads and loads and loads of kits and yeah it would happen there'd be a broken bit here and there luckily most customers were understanding and they kind of glued on a bit of landing gear here and there um, but in the end um, sorry I haven't got like some bubble wrap to sort of show you how I did it um, but in the end I did come up with a, a packaging system that seemed to really work and I basically called it the donut system whereby you know what you want to do is first off you know you don't want to buy any cheap cardboard box you know get the double walled stuff right sort of pad it out inside with a bit of um, bubble wrap but then I use this donut system whereby I would sort of roll up a long bit of bubble wrap I would then sort of fold it around and wrap it around into a donut shape um, but I would do that wrapping it round say a wing 
and then I'd wrap it around the other wing and then the front part of the fuselage and then the rear part of the fuselage. So you basically had these four donuts wrapped around the model in places where you wouldn't be sort of, you know, breaking anything, obviously. Um, and then you'd place that in the model and you'd have it so it was cushioned, right? Um, what you got to sort of think is you want the model to have a bit of bounce inside the box. You don't want it to be solid, so as if somebody sits on the box, it squashes it down, crushes the model. You want it to have a bit of bounce so that, you know, if there is some pressure applied on the box, that it kind of, it's got some squee, it's got some movement in it. If the box is being sort of bounced around, it's like a bit of a bounce, a bit of play. Um, and I found the donut system um, did that quite well so you don't really want to be and not only that it's sort of like if you completely pack the model full of all sorts of packaging you know it's only going to take a little bit of a bounce and you can break a a, a a bit of landing gear or a nose cone or something you know by having those donut system right you sort of end up having lots of space if you can kind of imagine what i'm trying to sort of say here it's sort of like the donut system meant all the landing gear would be free and there'd be nothing around it, nothing to kind of press against it or break it. Um, it was just the wings and the front and the rear of the fuselage and it had a bit of bounce and there wasn't a load of packaging squeezing against it. Um, I, I did find that I didn't have any breakages with that and I did do that for quite a while. Um, I did try other systems and I did have breakages but that seemed to be the one that worked. Um, hopefully I've explained that right. I mean, if not, just give me an email um, or maybe I'll do a quick sort of packaging tutorial maybe after this one if you want to sort of me, uh, me to show you through that. Uh, but I found that was a really, really good system. Um, when it comes to posters and packaging as well, I would also put, um, say if I charged £450 for um, say an, a, an F15 148 scale, I'd also go £450 plus £20 posters and packaging. Again, we've got to sort of, you know, take care of our costs as well. Um, plus you're sort of buying quite a bit of posters and packaging to make sure it's all nice and you're taking the time putting it together. Um, um, it, it is good to sort of go um, international as well if you can which probably good to find a good courier service um, I did find a good one I forget what that was called but um, I think I was paying like 10 pound for each package and I could send it around the world which was good um, the Royal Mail you know it's it's okay if you've got sort of smaller packages but or if you're just doing say the UK but um, you do want to get a proper courier um, if you're going internationally or you've got the bigger boxes because um, I think I remember the Royal Mail wouldn't take some of the bigger boxes because some of the models would be quite could be quite big and you'd want to put them in a really big box so you can really sort of pad it out um, to make it nice and secure um, so a good carrier is the other one um, the next one is is bonuses right <coughs> um, as I say you know, you want to build up a customer base and you want to get them asking for, you know, custom built models. So, you know, I was giving, as I say, example, F15, you know, 400, 450 pounds to build an F15. But what you want the customer to do is, and what you might want to sort of help encourage is also, you know, when you're giving out your quotes is sort of say, um, you could have resin, you could have, you know, photo etch, custom decals, custom this. And then this is where, um, you know, I found you could sort of up the price, get a bit more money and, you know, make a bit more money for a build. You know, a resin copy, um, you could be going off and going, you know, we, we, you know it's gonna take a bit more time to do a resin copy, it's a bit more work, a bit more advanced, right? So you know you can charge a little bit more for that as well as the parts, you know, don't forget to, you know, put the parts into all this and you could sort of, um, you know, build your way up to maybe a 600 pound commission build by adding bits of photo etch and resin parts and all that. So it's kind of good to try and encourage that. Um, a few downsides as well with the whole custom thing is what I found is, um, you got to be kind of careful. I mean, the way you go about it or, or whatever is up to you, your terms and conditions and, and whatnot, but um, you sort of, you know, it can be a little bit annoying. The downside to doing commission builds, you know, I don't want to put you off, but I want to sort of 
um, let you know a few annoying things um, is that you know customers can be quite picky you know I mean they they want a Pacific build right they can you know email you all the pacifics and everything but when you're actually building it and then, and then at the end of the day you go off and post I posted these pictures on on a forum to sort of show their build and then they email you back and go I didn't want it that way I wanted it this way um, again that could be quite annoying because as I say because you're only gonna really ever manage maybe say minimum wage for this and the money's not brilliant yeah so sorry about that um, yeah so as I say to have to come back and then you know correct something as you know in scale modeling you could be I don't know doing something custom in a copy and it could take you absolutely hours to do it and then the customer comes back and goes no can you change it and then you've got to go back you know, remove whatever you've done and then basically do the work again. You know, it can be a bit of a pain because it really sort of, you know, you could almost lose a day, you know, just doing some sort of a correction. So, um, you know, it's totally up to you. I mean, as I say, customer service is probably your best bet because these customers are few and far between and you want to keep them um, really sort of in your good books to be able to come back and then keep buying stuff off you um, but at the same time um, you know to have to do things like that is, can be a really big sort of a pain so you know it's kind of up to you the way, the way you go about it me I kind of just took it as a loss and you know keep the customer happy um, maybe um, you know you could sort of you know really sort of I did myself try and state to the customer really try and be specific in how you want things really you know show me some example pictures of, of stuff that you're after really sort of you know know exactly what they want um, I mean you know you could put something in the terms and conditions saying um, you know once it's done it's done no going back but mm, not the best of customer service but um, I, I generally just took it as a loss um, but I would always try and sort of get the customer to be really really specific on what they wanted because you don't want to be stepping back with that kind of stuff um, also I did sort of make sure that you know you get a non-refundable non deposit right um, I only say that because um, you know one you know you're giving somebody a slot in which to build this specific build if they you know decide they don't want it um, you know another customer could have took that build slot as well as you kind of want to get the bill you want to get the kits brought ready for that as well so you're potentially losing money if they back down so um, a little bit of a non-refundable deposit is um, probably a good way to go as well just to you know because I did have times where you know somebody would say I want this I'd buy the kit in um, and they would back down and then you've got this kit to kind of play around with to try and go off and sell um, um, also with the wholesale account um, that was another one is what I also did with the well the problem is with the wholesale account is is you normally got a minimum spend I mean I found with Hanans it was a hundred and sixty pound minimum spend um, other wholesale accounts would be probably different but you also want to sort of build up um, a bunch of kits to buy don't kind of like take somebody's order go off straight away and buy a kit I mean at first you probably will at first you probably will have to kind of like somebody makes an order you go off and you buy a kit off eBay or something um, and you'll be paying probably almost the full RRP price uh, but as you build up a sort of <coughs> a list of builds that you've got to do and you know you're getting like a month two months worth of work building up um, don't go off straight away and buy the kit you know wait for a couple of orders to come in where it builds up to I don't know maybe you got six kits to build and you could go off to um, you know get your uh, to a wholesale account and buy all these kits in bulk and it will bring down your costs which is what this is all about. Um, now, sorry, this has been a big sort of rant, uh, but it was, you know, it's quite a lot of lot to sort of get in if you're really sort of interested in doing commission builds. But in general, um, do you know what? It was really fun. I do kind of miss those days of just sort of, you know, no messing about, just build a model and just keep building and every day is just building and building um, you know it really was um, really was good fun it really is a fun job to do if you really sort of love the hobby you know to be able to just build constantly um, it is really fun it's really 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 good um, 
you know, but, you know, I did find that, you know, you just, as, as much as I tried, you're not going to get rich off it, um, which wasn't a big deal because, you know what, I was having fun doing it. So it's kind of up to you and how you want to go about it, whether it's something for you or not. But hopefully the experience I've shared with you, one sort of hopefully doesn't um, put you off too much. Um, hopefully, you know, you've taken from this whether or not this is something for you, that whether you know you want to do this as a job um you can always do it a bit part time you know just have fun building a build uh, a, a a model and just sell it you know it's totally up to you but hopefully these tips are going to sort of hopefully help you not sort of lose out um lose money um cuz i know once i did spend a week building this 148 scale spitfire put it up on ebay did a starting bid of 35 pounds um, and it went for £35, which, as you can imagine, is me completely and utterly out of pocket, uh, which is probably another tip as well. Don't put anything up as an auction. You will probably... Um, I did find that even when the auctions were doing well, I wouldn't get what I wanted, um, and you took the risk of what I've just said, is, you know, it just going for, like stupid money that really puts you out of pocket um you know always sort of you know say what you want for it you know an asking price don't think an auction or oh, i could get a load of money this could go really big it doesn't go big trust me uh, because you as i say it's a small small market and you've got to have two people you know that are willing to pay a lot of money to bid against each other and you don't really get that you know so it's always good to kind of put your asking price up there um, there's probably a load of other little things and whatnot but hopefully this is sort of giving you everything um, to sort of know whether you want to do it a few tips and tricks um, to go about it and hopefully make your business that bit sort of bigger and better um, so apart from that um, I hope you have a lot of happy building and hopefully you'll sort of get into the commission sort of realm of things and do a load of builds and be all nice and successful and everything um, but as always um, until next time my name is Bob Ward and this is Genesis Models and I hope you've enjoyed